By one broad definition, all poems are acts of translation. They're bridges between points in time and place, between human lives, or even between everyday words. That's part of the reason why poetry matters to a city with the increasingly diverse population of Boston. That also describes the work of the city's new poet laureate. We'd like to welcome Danielle Legros-Georges. Thank you very much for being with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. First of all, talk about your background. Uh, you're, you're very much a Boston person, and you're very much, um, well, from Haiti, too. Yes, I'm, I'm from both. I was born in Haiti, and my family had to move uh, from Haiti um, uh, as a result of politics there, uh, not unlike many other Haitian families. And so we settled in Boston in the 1970s. Um, I recall a fairly happy childhood. I was part of a small, then small, uh, Haitian, very tight knit Haitian community of about 60 families. That community has since expanded to be, um, to contain more than 60,000 Haitians um, here. And uh, I was, I, I am an immigrant, and so um, had to negotiate two very uh, different cultures that sometimes, uh, they sometimes felt contradictory. Uh, and so uh, poetry, in an interesting way, helped me make sense of those two cultures and the subcultures within those cultures I was negotiating. Well, one thing I, I pick up from, from looking at some of your poems, uh, even the very first poem in, in your collection, Maroon, is that this is about um, dealing with trauma in these poems, especially um, that poem to and from, you know, you know, people living with the threat of violence, living with the need to move off someplace else. Yeah, I think poetry um, and the arts can be a space of inquiry, can be a space to deal with very difficult subject matter. Uh, and for me, poetry was that, and I, I know that that is the case for, for other poets. And it can be the case for readers, too, to see what is difficult reflected in work uh, in, in ways that are, are, are safe because we were removed from, from the, the experience of, of, say, the trauma or the, the experience of the difficulty. A lot of people are, are survivors, but they're not poets. So how did you end up becoming a poet? Um, I think my love for poetry and the arts comes out of my, my family history. I come from a family of artists. My father was an architect and an engineer, taught us, my, my brothers and me, to draw. My mother was a, a, a baker of these very elaborate cakes. My grandmother was an extraordinary seamstress. I think Haiti is a country rich in the arts. Um, we may not have, we may not be rich in other areas, but we're rich in the arts, we're rich in the notion of family. And so uh, I was, I think, already predisposed to the arts. Uh, I found, as a young person, uh, a great interest in language. I was a kid who loved diagramming, you know, in the <laughs> third grade. I don't think most people enjoy that to the degree that I, I did. And um, I was always interested in language as a system in languages as, as systems. And, um, and so I was drawn to poetry for its ability to uh, help me conceive the world, to, to make the world new, to understand the world. Um, and uh, I, I love the, the great beauty in, in, in language and linguistic play. Uh, you also write about uh, the difficulty of, of going from one language to another. Uh, I, mean, I think one expression was, you know, going from Haitian Creole maybe to English was right. like the, the, the swim stroke through a block of ice. Yes, yes. Right. It's true. Um, you know, language is a carrier of meaning. Uh, and so I think about what, what can be translated and some of the things that cannot be translated. Uh, I think that um, that... that you know, these questions make their way through explorations of language, um, which I find fascinating. Well, it, uh, your, your first appearance is, Poet Laureate, one of the things that you worked on was this sense of what Boston is. And uh, it, it seemed to be like a whole new, um, um, almost kind of a whole new order for you. Um, talk a little bit about that poem that you read in Sym Symphony Hall. Sure, uh, at the uh, State of the State City by, by uh, Mayor Walsh. address back in January. Yeah, I was um, asked by uh, Mayor Walsh's office to, um, for a poem from which um, the speechwriters could draw a line for the State of the Union that had to do with um, sort of community and um, 
multiculturalism and sort of a gathering. And I thought, have I ever written such a <laughs> poem? <laughs> and I realized I didn't have a poem that met that fit that. Uh, that need immediately, so I decided to write um, the poem. And then, of course, I was confronted with how to start such a poem. And I thought, okay, well, let me start at the beginning. And then, of course, the question came up for me was, what was the beginning? What is the beginning of Boston? What is Boston's genesis? And I thought I had to start out with the Native Americans, the indigenous people, the First Nation people um, who were here in what we now know as, as Boston. Uh, and so I started uh, with that idea and then moved on to the idea of Boston's being set, settled by European settlers and also by other people, myself included, you know, much later down the line. Um, so this notion of Boston as a city of immigrants, like much of the United States is, uh, and, then, um, and then what Boston is known for, we're known uh, as a city rich in um, literary history, uh, a city that is not disconnected to um, ideas of independence and, and the, the American Revolution. And so I thought I'd touch upon that, but not go too deeply into that, because we're familiar with those stories. And then I, I thought I'd look around me to the Boston that I live in, that I know, for the people um, around me and I started with my neighbors and I have some wonderful uh, young neighbors. I have one who's a terror that I'd put him in the poem. I'd put my wonderful neighbor Wayne um, who lives across the street from me with his wife in the poem and I thought that would be a way to honor uh, my neighbors, the city, what's around me, what has sustained me uh, as a Bostonian. So the message is, uh, you know, no matter who you are, look out there, <laughs> open the window, open the door, your, your, your life is, is full of poetry. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah. Uh, talk about how you're going to help people with that, uh, because one, one of the things you're doing is you, you're, you're putting out the welcome sign. If you're working on this, you, you've got something uh, you want to show me or get some advice, I guess you're, you're going to be able to do that for people. Yeah, I am. I, I hope to. So I am going to be at the Boston Public Library branches. I've already been at one in East Boston and had a really wonderful um, two hours with folks who were interested in poetry coming to me, bringing to me their poems. We would discuss them. I also was really interested in what um, people had to say about the Poet Laureate program, how it could be the best Poet uh, Laureate program that it could be. So I got some really great ideas. Um, from one uh, participant. Uh, I will be at the uh, Mattapan branch uh, this Saturday uh, between 2 and 4. Uh, Saturday is, I believe, the 24th, whatever this Saturday is <laughs> in July. And then I'm going to be at the uh, Hone and Alston branch on August 8th, which is a Saturday, again, between 2 and 4. So getting out into the communities uh, through the public library systems. And the Boston Public Librarians have been really um, very helpful in, 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 in this initiative. And I hope to continue visiting uh, other branches um, throughout the, the next few years. I'm Poet Laureate for four years. So my hope is that by the end of the four years, I, I will have visited uh, each branch, if that's possible. Right. Thank you very much for being with us. Boston's Poet Laureate, Danielle Legros-Georges. We'll have more news in just a moment.